Be afraid. Be very afraid. Mama phoned up last night, she was going spare. She was in a tent, I'm pulling it around. Your sister's fault in a scruffy look, he said, Father, don't give a monkey to know what he said. I don't care, I don't care, I don't care if it comes round here. I've got my beer in the side pool here, let mama sort it out if it comes round here. I said to me, mama, let me have a talk to dad, so he comes to the telephone, it was an old pass. Said, she's got no sense in little can, if he comes round here, there's gonna be a row. I don't care, I don't care, I don't care if it comes round here. I've got my beer in the side pool here, let mama sort it out if it comes round here. I've got it somewhere else and always never got a job. He hangs around the bank and shop a lazy little yacht. Mama says, calm down, dad, he's all right, but they're out there snobbing in the pocket all night. Hello and welcome to Blackman's Bay Studios. Again. Again. Yes. Yes, again. We're back. And for the benefit of the few people left in the world that don't know us, my name's Mick and this is my old mate Keith. And uh, look, uh, we're here today. We're, um, we're going to give you the second instalment of our Mick and Keith's Guide 2 series. And uh, this is called Volume 2 and it will be up on... Uh, on our worldwide distributors on YouTube. Yeah, right? yeah, will be. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit today. We've touched on it before. We've touched on it before. Mika. Yeah, we have. Yeah. We've touched on bullshit industries, haven't we? Yeah. But we think that there's a couple there that need re-looking at. Yeah, fledgling, and you know, they're and, on their way. And there's some there that are emerging bullshit that we also want to talk about. Yeah. Uh, we're also going to talk about football, Mick. Yes, yeah, something that we know a lot about. Well, yeah. see, young people don't realise no, it, do they? They don't, no. don't realise our history in the game. No, do they? they don't, no. Uh, and, uh, you know, we are known globally, aren't we? Yes, we for are. Our football, yeah. you know, football knowledge and things like that. And although it's a bullshit industry, uh, as we know, but we felt that the pseudosciences needed a little bit of attention. Yeah, definitely, yeah. And, you know... It's uh, it's such a massive, massive industry that uh, we thought, well, we better we better give it that uh, yeah that little bit of treatment at the end. So we hope you enjoy it, and uh, we're going to kick off in a little while with uh, our look at bullshit industries. Uh, yeah, look, Mick, we as we've said uh, we, we said previously, we've touched on bullshit industries in uh, in one of our older older DVDs, and we don't want to go over old ground. No, of course not. And um, but. Uh, you know, there are some emerging bullshit industries that we're going to talk about, but just tell people what a bullshit industry is, Mick. Yeah, well, I think that was demonstrated quite recently, actually, because um, uh, one of the bullshit industries that we touched on before was the art industry. And, and recently, a painting, and I'll use that word loosely, and I think we're going to show a picture of it. Yeah, there'll be a picture of it. Flashed, by, flashed on your screen. Yeah. <laughs> by a, a bloke named Mark Rothko. Now, he sold this so-called painting for 53 fucking million pounds. Now, 53 million pounds. What's that, what's that in Australian dollars for our yeah, Australian viewers? Yeah, maybe? for the benefit of our Aussie viewers and um, Americans, that's over 80 million dollars. 80 million dollars. Now, if that's not bullshit, I don't know what it is. Well, just look at the painting. You tell me. I mean, it ain't a constable, is it? No. You know? No. It's absolute bullshit, isn't it? That's, yeah. it. that's correct. Yeah. And it, yeah, so well, we've also touched on the wine industry. It is a well-known bullshit industry, and of course, your favourite, uh, the old bottle border, the king. And uh, we also we've done uh, in the last DVD we've done about aliens and UFOs, which is you know another another well-known bullshit uh, bullshit industry. But there are a couple Mick that we really do need to talk about. Yeah, um, I agree. And uh, one of them is is we we believe has been a getting up there to bullshit, and it's probably a fully-fledged bullshit industry now. Isn't it? Uh, I think it is, actually, yes. You know. So, and that's the food industry, of course. Yes, uh, because of the uh, popularity of uh, cookery shows and these so-called uh, celebrity chefs, and you've also got the emergence of something called an executive chef. I don't know what an well, executive no, chef neither is, do I, but neither do I. nevertheless. And um, the trouble is it's spilling over into um, traditional pub type food, you, know, you, you can't go in a pub these days and get a regular steak and chips can you, it's got to be on a, a bed of garlic mash with herbs in it, or sweet potato, potato. Yeah, 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 you, you just can't and get, and you've got to have your little old, you know, they've got to do the old swirl on it, yeah, you know? and, and no gravy of course, oh no, no, you, 
June. Oh yeah, um, yeah. That's what yeah, they call no it nowadays. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's no gravy. gravy. Yeah. No, 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 no gravy. <laughs> and and you don't get swarms of it either, mate. Just get dots. Yeah, <laughs> See, you know? yeah. That's Strategically it. placed dots yeah. all around the place. Got to make know? a pretty pattern. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And again, yeah. Like, like you said, I think we, I, I think you should blame these uh, these TV chefs for all this bullshit. And there's a rule of thumb in it. Yeah, there is. Yeah. The rule of thumb is. The more you pay, the less you get. The less you get. Yep. And uh, you've only got to look at, like, say, look at these TV shows. But I want to, we want to bring your attention to um, what actually happened during the London Olympics. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm not sure if you know that there's, a, there's the world's top restaurant is called Noma. And they're in uh, Copenhagen. Yep. With the world's best chef, all that stuff, you know. Yeah. And... Uh, they, Claridge has actually opened up a branch of Noma for the Olympic Games. Right. So, it ain't going to be cheap, is it? No. no. It ain't going to be cheap. Definitely what, not. What do you think was on the menu? I wouldn't like to say. What well, I can tell you what was on the menu, Mick. This, on is, the, this is for the Olympics, is it? This, is for, this was a special menu for the Olympic Games. Special yeah. menu. Wild grass. Really? Wild grass, couldn't even be bothered to fucking tame it, right? So wild grass, and I kid you not, Mick, I kid you not, live, live ants. Ants? <laughs> live fucking ants. Um, you know, they certainly fill you up, they will, Well, they? look, um, and, it, and I said it wasn't cheap, you know how much, it, you know, what do you expect to pay for that, Mick? Well, uh, being Claridge's, I'd say probably 50 70 pounds, something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 305 pounds. What? 300 bucks. They sold over three and a half thousand portions while the, while the Olympics was on. I'm not joking. Unbelievable. Live ants. Claridges. The dirty bastards. Now, I attend quite a few functions, Mick. Yes. Uh, you know, with my job. Yeah. And uh, not just uh, here in Tasmania, but around the rest of Australia. And uh, there's also, the, the stuff has spilled over into sort of function food, finger food, you know. I go there now, and on every, every plate of lunch, every lunch that people give out these days, what have we got? Wraps. <laughs> We've got sandwiches with asparagus and fucking avocado and sun-dried tomatoes, you know, and stuff like Give me a fucking ham sandwich. That's all I want. <laughs> ham sandwich. Give me a cheese and onion sandwich or, or an egg sandwich. Yeah. You know, what's, I don't need half a garden in there. I certainly don't need purple fucking lettuce on the plate every time I want to eat. Uh, it's, you know. I know, I've seen it myself. It's everywhere. Yeah. And yeah. Isn't, every, every lunch we get now, it's always the same. It's as though somebody's gone, this is what you serve now, you know. Fuck what the people want, that is what we serve, you know? Yeah. It's, it's, oh, you know, it's absolute bullshit, it really no, is. I know. quite agree. So, um, what other industries should we uh, cover in this? Well, we spoke about emerging bullshit, didn't we? Yeah. And uh, let's be fair, the big emerging bullshit industry at the moment, I think, is coffee. Yeah, coffee, yeah. I think... <laughs> How hard can it be to make a cup of coffee, eh? Uh, look, now, I've got, an, I've got a confession to make here. Before I come to Australia, I didn't know what a barista was. I've never even heard of a barista. Neither had I. Now, for the benefit of the people like me and Keith that didn't know what a barista was, he's a man or woman who makes coffee. Yeah. In a cafe or somewhere like that. Yeah. Now, I mean, how hard can it be? All you do, you grind up some coffee if, if you want to, you don't have to grind it up. You grind it up and you, then you put a couple of spoonfuls in that little funny handle thing and then you put it on the machine and it squeezes hot water through it and um, then you get, you get some milk and you get just enough milk to do that cup, not enough to do say 10 cups and then you heat the milk up and get it ready to... Oh, I'm going to stop you there Mick. Heat the milk up, did you say? Yeah, I did, yeah. Warm the milk up. Ah, uh, yeah. You know, warm the milk up, because every cup of coffee you get these days, you can drink it down in one gulp. Yeah. There's no it's... such thing as hot fucking coffee anymore, yeah, is there? Yeah, sorry about that, because no, right. living in Tasmania, it could be deemed the lukewarm coffee capital of, of Australia, couldn't it? Oh, well, you know, I've seen our travel around Australia. It's no different, Mick. It's no different in the state. They do exactly the same thing. Oh, do they? Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. So, anyway, 
where was I? Yeah. Uh, talking about warming up milk then. Yeah. Right. So what you do, you put a load of froth in it, so you get more air in it. So and you you fill the cup up with half a cup of froth. So people think they're getting a full cup of coffee, but they're getting a load of air. And then all they do is just sprinkle a little bit of chocolate on the top, and there you go. No, are. no. No, 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 stop you there, Mick. Oh, sorry. Stop you, I'm sorry. Stop you there. You don't just sprinkle the chocolate on the top anymore. It's got to be a signature. Ah, uh, yeah, a yeah, pattern. yeah. You've got to have your patterns in there, haven't you? Yeah. See, your patterns and the way that you, you know, yeah. they get the old toothpicks and they swirl it about on there because it's their signature, isn't yeah, it? You it's know? a squiggly little thing. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah, no, no, yeah. Yeah. it's not just chocolate. You know, let's get it right. <laughs> yeah. You know, so in the meantime, this is yeah, taking yeah. about 10 minutes to cut, oh, isn't it? Of course it is. And you get yeah, all yeah. these people sitting in, uh, or standing in uh, cafes waiting for their coffee to take out. And, and they're probably looking thinking, oh, isn't this wonderful, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and there's a fucking world championship for this, believe oh, it or not. Yeah, I know. I mean, how hard can that be, eh? Yeah. Knock up a cup of... Now, Mick, <laughs> let me ask you a question. Yeah, go cool. on. How long would it take you to learn how to make a cup of coffee? Oh, 20, 30 minutes, say? That long? Yeah, well, yeah, but I'd, I'd have to go and take my coat off, and I'd, you've got to put the uniform on, because they've got to have that jaunty little hat with yeah. the dungaree-type yeah. apron that goes, and it's got to go right down to the ankles for some reason. I don't well, know why I don't, I don't know why I don't So, yeah, uh, yeah. by the time I've got all that on, it's done, isn't it? So, and the actual coffee-making, you know, training is, what, 10 minutes? Yeah, at most, is yeah. It? And it's yeah. a world championship for this, yeah. believe it. Learn how to plug the machine in, you know, learn how to push a button and that's you, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the prices, especially here in Tasmania, oh, how oh, much are they? It's average, average, what, 350? You get, you get somebody who's having three or four cups of, of coffee a day, yeah, it's about 100 bucks a week. Yeah, it's ridiculous. You know? Oh. Yeah, if that's not bullshit, I don't know. Well, what it is, exactly right, yeah. it's bullshit. Yeah. yeah.